Welcome to the Mad Scientist Podcast, powered by minorities who are astonishingly driven scientists, where we aim to serve everyone pursuing a career in STEM and teach them that they are graced to dominate STEM. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Mad Scientist podcast. I want to say thank you so much for clicking on this video and partaking in the Mad Scientist podcast. My name is Marilyn Chanel, and I have the pleasure of being the hostess of the Mad Scientist podcast. And so Mad Scientist stands for Minorities Who Are Astonishingly Driven Scientists. And it's just too long to say all the time. So we shorten it to mad scientists and this is for everybody pursuing a career in science technology engineering and math and wanting to build their relationship with god in the process so just a little bit about me um, i graduated in chemistry with a concentration in biochemistry about a year ago and throughout that process i had had some ups and downs in undergrad and I'm still having having this this moment of where I'm really seeking God on what what I'm supposed to be doing on this earth and uh, whether chemistry was the right thing for me or whether um, there's other lanes that he wants me to go into and the main thing that has been at the forefront is just building my relationship with God throughout this whole time and having him guide my steps throughout this whole process. And not only do I want this for me, but I want this for you too. Um, I wanted to raise the flag and find more people who are wanting to build their relationship with God in the process and knowing that God has called them to an area in science, technology, engineering, or math. And so if that is you, this podcast is for you. So as you can see by the title, it is for an audience of one. So I just want to ask you, whatever field you're in, what do you truly do it for? Do you do it for the money? Do you do it because it sounds good with your name? Do you do it for the shock value when you tell somebody, oh yeah, I'm a nuclear engineer and you love to hear the sound of, ooh, you must be smart. <laughs> or who do you do it for? Do you do it for your parents? Do you do it because they said that this was a lucrative career? Do you do it because they said, you better be a, a doctor, you better be an engineer? What do you do it for? And who do you truly do it for? That is gonna be our theme question throughout this episode. What do you do it for? And who do you truly do it for? So as stated before, this podcast is for those who are aiming to pursue their career in STEM or somebody who is just looking to grow in their career in STEM while building their relationship with God. And so the slogan of this podcast is grace to dominate STEM. So wanting to be better. And also to not just dominate in the fields of STEM, but to go out and be the light in it. So in order to go out and dominate and be the light in any field of STEM, you first have to go back to the one who created it. Not only just the one who created it, but the one who created us. <laughs> the one who is in the audience, the one who is always cheering, always clapping, and always wanting to see us be the best us that we can be and that person is god and that's what inspired the title for an audience of one it's working as if we're working unto him it's going out and making sure that what we do it for and who we do it for is for him so i want to bring up we'll start out with one scripture and that is colossians three twenty three. I'm going to be reading first in the NIV version. So it says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart 
as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So that was in the NIV version, but I want to read it in the message version because the message version hit a little bit different. So I'm going to read that one too. And this is Colossians 3, and this is going to start at verse 22 and then run to verse 25. So let's read that one. So it says, servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters. And don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Do your best. Work from the heart for your real master, for God, confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. The sullen servant who does shoddy work will be held responsible. Being a follower of Jesus doesn't cover up bad work. The one thing I want to say is this thing got me all the way together. This thing checked me. When I read it in the NIV version, I was like, okay, we're supposed to work as if we're working unto the Lord. But when I read it in the message version, it kind of put it into perspective of what this thing really means. And it really made me ask myself, what am I truly doing this thing for? Who am I truly doing this thing for? And so one, some words that I know may be a little uh be a little striking and that could be the word servants and master so because you know i wanted to google i want to say mm, what do they mean by servant what do they mean by master in this case so the definition of servant is a person who performs duties for others and then the definition for master is a man or person who has people working for him and master could also mean having or showing very great skill or proficiency. So in this case, when it tells us servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters and don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Work from the heart for your real master. So us being a servant is a person who performs duties for others. So it's not just talking about a servant as in being somebody's slave. But serving in this case, or in our case, people who are going and pursuing their careers in STEM and growing their careers in STEM, um, we can be servants to our, our bosses on the job or servants to our professors or teachers. And master in this case, um, somebody who has people working for them or someone who shows very great skill or proficiency, our master could be our boss. <laughs> our master could be our professor who shows very great skill or proficiency. And in this scripture, in this case, it's not, it's mainly talking about us serving them as a student or serving them as a worker. So I just wanted to give some, some definitions to that. And so when it comes to these verses, verses of Colossians 3, 23, um, or Colossians 3, 22 through 25. This has been the scripture I want to start off with to let us really evaluate what we truly work for and who we truly work for. I had to analyze myself and I want you to do the same thing. How are you showing up? And who are you showing up for? How do you work? Do you just do the bare minimum to just get you by? Do you actually go above and beyond? Do you give 110% when it comes to doing work? Do you show up on time? Do you complete your work to the best of your ability? It's been all of these questions that I've been asking because when it comes to being somebody who's been called to the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math, God wants you, God if that's a place that he's called you to, he wants you to go out and be the light in that place, but also be your best in it. He doesn't just want you to be there doing the bare minimum because we're workers of the kingdom. So we, we don't want to represent the kingdom badly. 
And this is something that had me analyze. Have I been showing up late? Have I been doing my work uh, to the best of my ability? And if God were to come back or if God were to look down and give me a performance review of how things have been going, what would be my grade? And I have to be honest, there were some things that I really needed to fix and still some things that I need to fix right now when I gave myself a, a performance review and asking, how am I showing up? Am I working as if I'm working unto the Lord? Am I working as if he's the only one in my audience? Am I working as if he's my boss? Am I studying as if he's my teacher? Am I showing up as if he's the professor? Let's move some questions. And I encourage you to ask yourselves those questions too. So next, I want to move into a Bible a reference story of two people in the Bible, two brothers. And we're going to talk about the story of Cain and Abel. So if you don't know, Cain and Abel were the sons of Adam and Eve. Who were, and Adam was the first man that God created in Genesis. And Eve was the woman that God created from Adam. And they gave birth to two sons. Um, well, more people, but we're going to be talking about the two sons um, for now. And that is Cain and Abel. And so Cain is the oldest brother. And Cain is or was the tiller of the ground. So he was, he was somebody who was designed to break up hard, compact soil. Somebody who was was able to till the ground to be used for planting. And then we have Abel, who is the youngest brother. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. He was someone who was like a shepherd. So we're going to be reading from, well, starting at Genesis chapter four, verse three. And so it says, and then process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruits of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And then in Genesis chapter four, verse four, it says, and Abel, he also brought of the first things of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Now, one question I had to ask was, well, God, why did you accept the offering from Abel, but you didn't accept the offering from Cain. Cain also brought you, they brought you two different things, but they, you know, Cain brought you some fruit or some, yeah, some fruit from the ground and Abel brought you some flock. But when you dive a little bit deeper into the scripture, Cain brought of the fruit of the ground. He brought that as into an offering unto the Lord. And then Abel, he also brought something to God. But pay attention to this. It says, of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Abel brought the firstborn and the fat thereof. He gave the best of the best of this thing. And I asked the questions why the fat? Why the firstborn? And why were they so significant to God? Why did he have such a high regard for Abel's offering and not Cain's? Specifically, and the difference was specifically the firstborn and the fat Abel brought. So I was looking through some Bible scriptures I found in Leviticus well, first, I'll start with Numbers. So Numbers chapter 18, verse 17. And it says, but the firstborn of an ox or the firstborn of a sheep or the firstborn of a goat, you shall not redeem. They are holy. You shall sprinkle their blood on the altar and shall offer up their fat and smoke as an offering by fire. Or soothing aroma to the Lord. 
So God is saying that the firstborn of the goat, of the sheep, of the ox, the animals here, they're holy to God. And God is also saying, offer up their fat as smoke. Offer up their fat in smoke as an offering. For it is a soothing aroma to the Lord. Okay. And so we now that we got that, let's go to Leviticus. So Leviticus 3, chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. And it says, and he shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. The fat that covereth the inwards and all the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks and the call above the liver with the kidneys, it shall, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor. All the fat is the Lord's. So in the Old Testament, we see that God has some, some rules for offering him. He has some rules for what to do with your firstborn. He has some rules for how to offer your animals, how to offer your sacrifices, and how to offer uh, the firstborn and the fat unto God. And so this could answer the question of why did God have such acceptance of Abel's offering when Abel brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. But it says eight, but it says that Cain, he brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. We see one person just bringing, you know, just bringing some fruit. And we see the other person really bringing the first thing of his flock and really bringing the fat thereof. One person is really going above and beyond and not just going above and beyond, but he's following the rules that God says to follow whenever you're bringing an offering unto God. We have two people working. One person does a little bit of the work. He brings something. But we see Abel is the person who not only does the work, but he follows the rules and he does his best to follow the instructions of giving of giving his offering. And I wanted to drag this story in here when it comes to for an audience of one. Both of them did work for God. Both of them gave God something. Cain gave God his fruit from the ground. But Abel gave God the best of the best. He gave God his first, his first, uh, firstlings of his flock, the firstborn of his flock. And not only that, the fat of his flock. And he followed the rules that God set when it comes to these sacrifices. And we see how Abel was the one who worked as if he was working unto the Lord, as if God, and God was the one in their audience. And he was working to please God. He was working to do his best for God. He was working to really go all out, which is why God accepted his offering. which is why God accepted his offering. One thing I do want to read you is I want to read the last part of Genesis. I want to read the last part. So 
in Genesis chapter 4, verse 4, after Abel brought his offering of the fat portions and the firstborn, God looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. And Cain became angry. And it says that his face was downcast. And then God says in verse 6, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 6, Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? So we see two people working. Cain, and Cain gets angry that God didn't accept his work compared to Abel. But Abel was the one who went above and beyond to do his work as if he was truly working unto the Lord. So when it comes to us, and when it comes to us being people who are pursuing a career in STEM and who are building our relationship with God as we are doing this thing and really, and really having God lead us throughout our lives as we work in STEM, is God the one in our audience that we are truly showing up for? Is God the one in our audience that we are truly doing the work for? That we're not doing it for the money. We're not doing it because it sounds good with our name. The title sounds great. But we're truly working unto God and we're truly bringing him our best. We're truly bringing our best in school, if you're in school, our best in our job, if you're working your job or our best, maybe if you have your own business in, in STEM, or you could be a teacher, whatever it may be. If you're writing a paper, or if you're a teacher in any STEM subject, a presentation you have to, you have to construct. When you're studying for your test, whatever it may be, are you truly bringing God your best? One thing that I, and I, I know earlier in the episode, I said that how me, I had to be honest and say that if, if God were to give me a performance review, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be an Abel. I wasn't working like Abel. I wasn't working like him. I wasn't giving my best like him. Abel gave 110% as if he was working unto the Lord. And that's what we should strive to do too. To work as if we're working unto God. To work as if he's the only one in our audience. We should strive to please him above our teachers, above our bosses, above pleasing our peers, above pleasing our parents. But truly work as if we're pleasing God. Yeah. And give 110% for him. <laughs> so I want to ask you if God were to give you a performance review what would your performance review be and if you're somebody like me and you had to be honest or have you truly been working as if you're working unto the Lord because I, I was honest with y'all I wasn't I wasn't I had to analyze and I still do and I'm still working to get there of how am I showing up how am I doing my work? Am I showing up on time? Am I starting ahead of time with my assignments? Am I starting ahead of time with whatever I've been uh, asked to do or called to do? Have I not been procrastinating or being disobedient with the things that I've been called to do? So that is in our episode. Let me know in the comments how this has been and how you are striving to work as if God is the only one in your audience that you are aiming to please. That God is the only one in your audience that you are aiming to say, I'm working as if I'm working unto him. <laughs> so this has been another episode of the Mad Sciences podcast called For an Audience of One.
And if you want to follow us, follow us on Instagram at MadScientistSC. Or if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram as well at Marilyn Chanel. And if you want to listen to this podcast, we have uh, the Apple podcast link in the bio. I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I can think of before? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but I would encourage you guys to go back and listen to our previous episodes. Go back into and listen to our previous interviews. Let me know how you like it. Let me know how things have gone. And let me know how you are going throughout this process of building your career in STEM while building your relationship with God in the process. Hope you guys have an amazing week and I love you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Mad Scientist Podcast. Remember, we are graced to dominate STEM. Like a distant cousin, brother, little sister. I see myself in the young ones when I look in their eyes and feel like a mirror.